All right. Uh, we have a program on Sunday the 17th at 5.30 Indian Standard Time uh, at Google Hangout Show where we will be uh, asking uh, the founder of Rindu Samhati, Tapan Ghosh, to do a presentation, a situation report of uh, the Bengal Hindus. Now, the uh, problem that he is going to talk about uh, are about certain recent disturbances in the township of uh, Nadia in West Bengal and some other surrounding villages. But this has been, uh, you know, uh, recurring kind of problem, especially in the border districts of uh, West Bengal, adjoining Bangladesh. This is not without a reason. It's because of the constant influx of the Bangladesh uh, immigrants into these uh, areas and the demographic uh, shift, uh, the uh, slow turning of these enclaves, uh, the Hindu societies there, uh, turned into minorities. And then when the critical masses, certain critical masses reached, uh, they are getting uprooted from this through intimidation of physical violence. What happened in Nadia uh, went unreported initially until the social media picked it up and these pictures and the reports started going viral and then the uh, mainstream media was forced to report on this. So. Well, about the Bengali Hindus, they had this problem long in its making, long in its coming. Uh, the peculiar thing is that uh, they have lived through uh, this problem like no other people. It was, in fact, in Bengal, from Bengal, that this movement of uh, Islamic radical movement seeking a kind of an eth ethnically cleansed land as pure Pakistan means pure. Uh, the idea to go and get uh, some uh, ethnically cleansed uh, land uh, solely on the basis of uh, the uh, Islamic uh, identity uh, rose from Bengal. The first call came from Dhaka. It was only later on uh, in Lahore the resolution was passed. The second thing is that uh, the reason why this uh, constant influx of immigrants is happening is not due to economic uh, reasons alone. Uh, that is how the Marxists put a spin on it and explain it and justify it. But actually this immigration is a part of the Islamic movement's drive to acquire a living space. They took it from the uh, Germanic League uh, during the uh, gap between the First World War and the Second World War. We, uh, the uh, Nazi movement was in its nascent stages and they were talking about uh, uh, Greater Germany and going out uh, and then uh, the Germanic people taking back those lands for as a living space. So uh, they started this uh, quest for acquiring more land and Islamizing it. So this Islamization drive on the movement is uh, deeply entrenched, uh, integral to the, the Pakistan movement as well as uh, the ongoing, currently ongoing global Islamization drive. Ironically, if you look at Bangladesh, you will see that the secularists are putting up a resistance, a stiff fight to the advances uh, of this Islamist movement. Why? In India, the so-called secularists are actually uh, hand in glove uh, with the uh, Islamists, uh, whom they actually kind of uh, project as, within quotes, minorities to be protected, which means this Islamist movement, the Islamist drive, the Islamization drive is being protected, shielded by the media, and the political movement. It is high time the Bengalis wake up to this fact. Because um, they went through everything the years preceding the partition. The reason why the leaders, Indian leaders, had to agree to the division of the land to an ethnically cleansed two parcels 
as Pakistan was because of the shock of the kind of violence they unleash like there is this today on the streets of Calcutta. So it is only after seeing this now calling and other things the Congress leadership have buckled in and then had to agree to the partition. And even after that it continues. Because naturally, because it is a part of the Islamist quest. So the Khatan infiltrated. And in Bangladesh, that is which was eastern Pakistan, they were systematically going after the non Islamic uh, parts of the society, especially the Hindu minority, the Buddhists, the Chakmas, the Christians. So they were systematically conducting pogroms and displacing them. Uh, periodically they were uh, pouring into India as refugees. And it does reach the height during the genocide. A genocide happened and the Bengali Hindus were looking at it. They knew who were doing it. So the Bengali Hindus uh, failed to draw the uh, proper lessons from all this. Uh, they have been, you know, kind of, uh, they have sunk into a kind of a denial, like an alcoholic denial is, uh, is habit. So yeah, they, are, they are just denying it. They are looking at it saying that it is only a petty problem. It is just between two communities. We will refuse to actually handle, look at it that way. And so what is the other way? Which is that, that you, be, you all become uh, without any identities and whoever happens to be suffering there in each incident is left to defend on its own. Which means the Hindu society is literally thrown to the dogs. In fact, this is what Shant Prasad Mukherjee told on the floor of the assembly uh, that we have thrown the Hindu society to the top. <laughs> well, uh, it is regarding the party. So, it is high time uh, the uh, Bengali Hindu as well as the rest of the Hindu society. Yeah, we owe responsibility. We, we owe something uh, towards the um, uh, security towards the well-being of the Hindu society uh, that happens to be minorities in Bangladesh or happens to come under the uh, pressure, uh, the sudden onslaught of the same Islamist movement and its assaults and its drive to push them out. There seems to be nobody there on the ground except uh, well, small outfits uh, with resolve, brave hearts like Tapan Ghosh of who is the founder of Hindu Samhati, who has put up a very brave show there. But then, uh, it is time the Bengali Hindus also wake up and, uh, you know, quit daydreaming and, uh, you know, denying that there is no problem. It is not at all a communal problem between Hindus and Muslims. No. Look at Bangladesh. They have the same conflict. The Islamist Jamatis are going after the secular, doing the same thing they are doing to the Hindus here. Look at Iraq. Look at Syria. They are going after the Christians. So it is, it is not, not at all uh, something between two people or not. It is between a movement, an Islamist movement, that is determined to do ethnic cleansing. And so they go for more and more fresh areas, demographically top of it, and then push the uh, non-Islamist element out, bring those people under its own control, its own community under control and then keep ever growing. So this is how you have to look at this problem. And Tapan Ghosh is here to tell us what is actually happening on the ground in Bengal, Sunday, 17th, 5.30 p.m. I'll be waiting for you.